Guys and girls, today we're upgrading the T5 transporter, it's the early one, we're rocking the tape deck. I've had a tape deck since, since owning it, about a year, and I only have one tape. That tape is now worn out, we need to upgrade it to a 9 inch Android touchscreen, let's get into it. We're moving inside. Bit of interior work. It's a little bit windy outside. It's warmed up, but it's a bit windy. Anyway, enough chit chat. Stereo. I've been rocking this tape deck. The early T5s, well, mine did. Some posh ones might come with a CD player. But mine had a tape deck and a funny little, uh, I was going to call it an ashtray, but a funny little tray. I've looked online, or I looked online, steady. I've looked online previously, and there's a guy that sells Android stereos for the T5 One that fits straight in there. I messaged him and said, "Do they fit the T5? How much are they?" He said, "They don't fit the T5s, only the T5 Ones." So I'm not going to sell one to you. I was like, oh. "Anyway, he didn't sell me one, but." Uh, I have used these Android stereos for a long time. I'm, t I'm talking five, six, seven years. I have got my Nissan L Grand over there. I've got one in the dash, and I've actually got a flip down one for the kids in the back. I've got two in my Transit, one in another car, and one in a little homemade box. If you've seen my camping video where we camped in the back, I've got one in a little box as well. They're absolutely brilliant. They're very slimline. It's not like an old stereo that was hanging out the back. They're very slimline. It's more like a tablet that plays music, but they're cheap and cheerful. This one is a hundred quid. You can get them cheaper, but the cheaper ones have less memory, less ROM, less RAM. This one is an eight core, four gig RAM, eight gig ROM. No, 64 gig ROM. I'll put a link to it in the video description. It's about 100 quid. If you get one or see one for cheaper, because there's a lot of these on eBay, but you're going to see some really cheap ones. And if you look, some of them are 1 gig RAM, 8 gig ROM. I've got one of them in my transit, and literally, you go to use it and it crashes. It's that slow. But this is one of the latest ones, 8 core. 100 quid, brilliant. Um, it's got YouTube on it. You can install Netflix, but you need to install an older version app. It does Android and Apple CarPlay. All the good stuff, I'll tell you about it in a minute, but fitting it. As the T5 only has a cutout for a tape deck and that silly little tray, I've butchered it, basically. I've butchered the dash. I say I've butchered it, it's a bit crude. I took this panel off. First of all, this is a nine inch screen, so it's quite large. It's actually all right. I was, I was happy with the size. I was gonna get a smaller one. I was gonna go for eight inch, but there isn't many of them. So I went for the nine inch, and basically, you can see what's going on. Normally when this tape deck's in, and the tray's in, it's got two flat surfaces on either side. If you've got a T5, and you're watching this video, you know exactly what I mean. If you've got a T5 one, you've already got a double DIN cutout. Yeah. T5s, they don't have. So I got the stereo, I took the trim piece out. Let me just quickly run you through that, take two seconds. This top part, the back pops up, and then it slides out backwards. To get this face panel off, there's two Torx 20s facing down, one, two, and then with a plastic trim tool, just shimmy the rest off. That come off nice and easy. You don't need to pull none of the dials off or anything. Excuse me. It is literally just the trim. I pulled him off and then I laid him on the front. Like so. Is he going to fit now? It'll make me look silly. Like so. I drew around it with a pencil. You could use a pen, um, but a pencil, it wipes off. The nine inch screen just fits on the inside of the recessed panels. I didn't want to start butchering into this or into the vents or anything like that. 
the nine inch screen just fits in that. You do have to trim it out. I spent a little while cutting it out. I drew around it, I used a die grinder, use a bit of sandpaper, and I've got it to sit really nice. First of all, I wasn't even going to cut it out. I did set the stereo up and I had it sat on the front. Because of the design, that perfectly sat on the front. There is some little locator tabs where they, you could put screws in. I just cut them back with a blade, but that sat just on the face. So then you haven't got to do any cutting. It literally sat on the front and look, it looked perfectly fine. I was just being, I was going to leave it like that. No cutting, absolutely nothing, nice and simple. But I did, I ended up cutting it in and it drops in. It doesn't sit perfectly flush. It is, there is a lip around the outside. You could get it even lower. Now let me show you. On the bottom here, there was a, a bit of plastic, but two Torx 20s and I slid him out and then uh, the stereo sits in and it butts up against these two bits of plastic. If you wanted it to sit even further in, you could sand these down. I might do that at a later date, but it really doesn't bother me, slightly protruding. Um, but if you wanted it to sit a little bit flusher, you just need to take some of these off and it sits nice and flush. If you're wondering about how mounting it, well, mounting it, I could have spent ages making a metal bracket. The, uh, the outside of the, the stereo part actually fits in that square nice and snug. Even without the fascia panel on, the stereo sat square, it didn't move up and down, it didn't move left to right. Um, it, it, it actually sits in the hole nicely. Some of you may like this, some of you may not, but it's really simple. I could have made a bracket. Well, I hadn't even worked out how to make a bracket. And what I'd done in the end, for simplicity, with that top part out, I can get my hand in the back. So I've crudely, but very effectively, I've put a cable tie in the back. Cable tie in the back of the stereo, <whistles> nice and easy. And then a cable tie there in the back down there, there's actually a locator. On the old stereo, there's a little pin. That's a locator. That slides in there and locates it. Well, I put a cable tie around that too. And then it was a little bit fiddly. It takes a minute, but not ages. I've got a cable tie between those, put it in, and then I pulled the cable tie tight. Zipped it up, stereo, absolutely solid. It isn't moving. If you want to get it out again, you just pop the top cover off and cut one of the cable ties. Perfect, simple, but very effective. Again, I could have spent ages making a bracket, but I thought, why uh, is it really a dumb idea if it works? So I was happy with that. Happy with how it looks, happy with how it sits. I'll quickly turn it on in a minute and show you functioning. Um, don't want to talk or chit chat too much because you guys just want to see how it works. With wiring, the only problem with these Android stereos, it comes with all the pigtails, of course, but they don't have a connector on, so you have to join the wires up. Someone had already butchered my ISO plug. Where is it? Someone has already butchered it and put um, chocolate blocks, I call them. Someone had already done that. So I carried on the theme, and as a, again, it's not the prettiest, I've got a chocolate block. They are made for joining wires, but they're not very pretty and they take up quite a lot of space. But because the Android stereo hasn't got a lot hanging out the back, there's plenty of room for wires in there. So although it doesn't look too pretty, it does its job nicely. If you're wondering about wires, have we got it here? Have I got it? Well, they come with a little handbook and it tells you what all the colors are. Obviously, you've got earth, permanent live, switch live, illumination. So when you turn the lights on, the lights on the stereo come on and speaker wires. And then we've also got an amp. I'll show you my sub and amp in a minute. And then we've got the reversing camera. Any wires that are unused, I chopped them even and I'll put some tape around them. That way they can't arc out. Again, it's not the prettiest, but it does the job nicely. Um, 
if you don't want to butcher or cut your T5 loom like that one has been, they are ISO connectors. It's an eight block connector. There's normally two of them, a black and a brown one. If you don't want to cut them, you can get ISO adapter leads. I'll put a picture of up one now. Rather than cutting into your van or cutting into your wiring, you could buy one of these plugs. They might be about a fiver. Don't know now. I will, uh, I'm sure you would have seen in the picture I just put up. Buy one of those and you can cut the ends off those. That saves you having to cut the plugs on your van. Um, it's quite straightforward. On the back of your old stereo, there is, is there? Yes, there's actually a little sticker. And if you look at it, it tells you what wires are what. Live, earth, switch live. Well, we'll talk about switch live because um, VWs don't have switch lives. They have CAN bus, which controls all that. But I have taken my live, I've got a battery under my passenger seat. So I have taken a live and a switch live from the passenger seat, run it up uh, behind the dash, behind the glove box, took the glove box out, Behind the glove box, there is a nice, uh, there's an old loom or the wiring loom for the van and I cable tied it nicely. So it's all nice along there. And I use the red wire for the red wire. Uh, no, that's yellow. Red to the red uh, and the black wire because I use two core cable. I'll quickly show you a picture of how that looks. Two core cable with a red and a black inside. You could run two individual wires, but they just look a bit messy. So I bought 50 meters of this and I use that. And then basically I use the black as the, uh, the, the switch live. And then I've got a little switch down here that controls it. Because if you're parked up and you don't want to run your battery flat, but you want the stereo on, it's now coming from the backup battery. And that is the whole point why I've run it from the back up to the stereo. And this is just an on and an off. And if you think, oh, I don't want to kill my battery and leave my stereo on, well, surely you can see the stereo's on and you turn it off when you get out. Anyway, that is enough chit chat about the stereo. I will turn it on in a minute and quickly show you because it has got Android Play, uh, Apple Play. I'm an iPhone man. It's got all that, all the good stuff. I did, uh, I did wire a sub and an amp in. It's got door speakers in the T5 and it's got dash speakers, but it's not very bassy. It's not, it's not the loudest. And I said to the missus, I said, I'm going to wire a sub and amp into the back of the van. She's looked at me like, what, like when you was 18? Uh, are you not a bit old for that? And I thought, well, I weren't until you've said it like that, looking at me with that funny face. So yes, I've wired a sub and amp in. We've got the sub and the amp wires. It comes as a pigtail to keep the wiring loom as tidy as possible. Any that I haven't used, I've just run a bit of black tape around it. Rather than all these, I, I don't even need, no, if, I, if you never need them, if you think, oh, I'm never going to use them, cut them off. Makes the wiring loom behind the dash even tidier. Let me plug it all in because I want to quickly show you how it works. Uh, because I was impressed. For the money and how it fit, I am very impressed. Obviously, I've already done this before the video. I do like to have, if you've seen any of the previous videos, you know I like to know what I'm talking about before I tell you guys about it. So I have spent the past few days playing with this. And we've got a reversing camera too. I've always wanted to do one. Everyone's got one nowadays, but I've never got round to it. I didn't want to put parking sensors on the rear of the T5. So I thought, I'm actually going to do a camera this time. And it's actually pretty sweet. All plugged in, nice and simple. And again, on a final fix, I literally run a cable tie from the back of the stereo to that little uh, locator, zip it up, and this is absolutely solid. It's perfect, I can't... You could spend hours making a bracket, but why bother? Cable tie does it. Got my switch, we're running from the battery, we already know that. Is it going to work now? It is going to work. The first time you boot it up, it takes about 30 seconds. So I'll just skip to that. Just like so. Boot it up in a split second. Once you've uh, powered it on and off, look, if I turn it off now, it's now got the, the permanent live 
So straight on, it's a lot quicker. Bluetooth, Android, Apple CarPlay, it's handy. It's handy to have it on your phone. It's handy to have it working. And I connected my phone, Bluetooth, went into settings, connected Bluetooth. Bluetooth is disconnected. Blue, oh, cut. Right. And that's how easy it was. I got in the car. I didn't even connect it. Once you've connected it once, as soon as you get in the vehicle, turn the stereo on, the stereo connects automatically straight away. And on this, I have got, because most T5s and the VW caddies, a lot of VWs of a certain era have absolutely crap radio reception. So on my phone, I've got two apps. One of them is Global Player, and that plays Capital Dance, Capital Extra, Heart, Non-Stop, 90s. It's got loads of radio stations. And if I go back again, this is the interface of my phone, by the way, on the screen. I've also got the Kiss Cube app, and we've got Kiss, Kissery, Kiss Fresh, Dance. Loads of good radio stations that play 100% of the time. Rather than driving around the back roads, you lose reception. I play it all from my phone. Um, I don't know what else you can do on the app. We park up a lot, me and the missus and the kids. And rather than go and put pound in the meter, well, it's probably about three quid nowadays. I've got the Ringo app. And I can do that all from the stereo, which through my phone. Uh, lastly, we can go to the Google Maps. That's now running from the Google Maps off my phone. And you can have that on as well as, uh, as well as the radio. So let me click this and I've got to quickly pause it before I get copyright issues. And now if we go back, I don't know how I've done it the other day. Yeah, there we go. So there's the radio. Um, you can obviously change the radio station there. And we've got the, the sat-nav all on the screen, nice and easy. Um, really impressed with the Android Apple CarPlay. I'm Apple, really impressed with the linkability. Literally got in it, linked it once, and now it's always linked. Um, obviously there's YouTube and stuff on the stereo, so if we go back, uh, it's got the YouTube apps, you can watch DTE on the go. No, you're not allowed to watch on the go. When you pull over, you can watch DTE TV. It's got YouTube app, I have got a Netflix app, but, you have to install an older one for it to work, apparently. I haven't got that far. Um, obviously, Google and stuff like that. Brilliant stereo, £100. Anything you can do on an Android phone, you can do on this stereo. Um, uh, and yeah, absolutely brilliant. One thing to bear in mind, as soon as the kids get in the motor, they link up to my personal hotspot and they're on their iPads. So my phone gets battered by the kids driving anywhere so if you don't put your phone on charge as soon as you get somewhere you've got no battery well it's the same with this because this is linked to my phone everything is draining from my battery using the internet etc so i have installed you might have already seen it this is a wireless charger wireless magnetic charger so your phone magnets magnetics to it or magnets to it you get the idea it did have that on the back of this charger well i took that off and underneath that is a Phillips screw that holds into the back of the unit. Well, I popped out one of these square doobries, drilled a hole right in the middle, and I screwed that straight to one of these squares. I did end up gluing around the square because when you pull your phone off, it just pulled the trim out. So I glued the trim in and I did tuck the power cable. Hopefully I've plugged it back in the stereo before we go any further. I tucked the cable back through the same little notch as well. I notched out the side of the little square trim piece and the cable runs into there. And then the cable from the charger, magnetic wireless charger, is actually plugged into one of the USBs in the back of the stereo. So now, as soon as I get in the motor, not only does it connect itself, it charges, it's magneted nicely. When you're sat in the driving position, you can see your phone, not that you should be touching it, but it's all right there. Phone's charged, phone's on charge. It's in view nicely, it's magneted. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, I can't rate these stereos enough. Again, I will put it a link in the video description. 
and don't buy a cheap one because they're cheaper for a reason. Lastly, about the stereo, I'm going to quickly show you the sub and amp and I'll quickly show you the reversing camera. Not the biggest video today, but just a little video because I see a lot of people asking about fitting screens into a T5 and it's really simple. Once you've cut your aperture out, the stereo fits in nicely. Cable tie in the back. You do have to join the wires, unfortunately. There isn't no ISO plug unless you buy one and connect them. I fitted an amp, sub an amp in the back, and because the missus was like, hmm, ain't you a bit old for that? These stereos are absolutely brilliant. The blue wire in the back of the stereo goes to, so if I go into factory setup, one, two, three, four is always the code. And then if we go to radio settings, antenna set. The blue wire in the back of the stereo is actually for the power antenna. So when you'd get in, if it was old school and you had an aerial that went this controls it, but you plug the amp into that. Let's say you're driving down the road and a banger, absolute banger comes on. You're gonna have radio settings and you're gonna to turn to normally open, okay. That's the sub on now. Thumping, thumping, boom, boom, bass, arm hanging out the window, oh yeah. Then the missus and kids get back in the motor, they don't want the bass. They want the stereo on low so you can overhear their noisy iPads. Simple, turn it to normally closed, bang, amps off. How easy is that? So you can control, turn the amp and sub off from the stereo. If you just want to leave it on so it comes on and off with the stereo, have it on automatic. So when you get in, ignition on, well not ignition on, so we're running through there. A sub and amp on. And it does always remember the last setting, even though you've turned it off, because you've got the yellow wire connected to permanent, it remembers everything. And I leave that page open. So CP link, this is the app that does your controlling of your phone. I leave that open and I leave the sub and the amp one open. I'll probably get bored of the sub and amp soon, so I might take it out. I doubt it. So I leave that open, and I just click on it, it's right there, nice and easy. Um, that is it. Bit of long-winded chit-chat about the stereo, but uh, it's really simple. Out to the back of the van, and it's as simple as that. I did, because I've got the T6 tailgate, I drilled a hole in it. If you've got the earlier T5 with the plastic, I'm not sure about your mounting locations, but I do know that you can get a reverse camera that goes in with one of the number plate lights, which is pretty cool. But I've got a T6 tailgate. I've got one of the cheapest, nastiest cameras. I will update that or upgrade it very soon. I drilled a hole, poked the auxiliary cables through. Easy. Um, and I angled it down because I wanted to see where I was parking. I didn't want to be drilling holes in my back bumper for reverse parking sensors. I wanted to do a camera. Um, and it's, it's straightforward. It's got instructions in the packet. We've got your live and earth for the camera. And then we've got your auxiliary. Is that auxiliary? AUX? No. RCA. You've got your RCA lead. And I did spend a while getting it through the rubber. Oh, my grommet's hanging out there. I need to poke him back in. There was no way I was getting that yellow plug through there. So I drilled a hole coming back through. I poked him out. I've done the same going in there. It isn't the prettiest, but if I hadn't pointed it out, you might not have seen it. I do need to glue him back in. I right, check out my bodge. I have fitted two extension cables. I have looped one over. One goes into the tailgate. So if I ever want to change the camera, I've got the plug in the tailgate. I've also got another extension lead that runs down to the front uh, back of the stereo. And that wasn't long enough to reach this one, so I've got two. So I've ordered a male to male connector or female to female, either or. I need to connect them two together. But it hasn't turned up in time for this video, so I've crudely, temporary, definitely not permanently, just bodged a bit of wire on there, but it works. Anyway, the reversing wire is that there. It's green with a black stripe. I untaped the loom, I pulled the rear light out, and the green 
with the black stripe is the signal power wire to turn all of this on. It's quite easy to save running a wire all the way down to your rear light. I've literally just found it in the wiring loom up there. I did have to take the headliner down to do said job and then I just earthed it to a screw up there. 12 inch, check that out for the boom booms. What's going on with the focus? There we go, Kerwin Vega, absolute beast. I've had that for many years. I'll show you the amp install. I'll show you the reversing camera done and check what I've had to do to the seat so you guys could have a camera. Joys of the YouTube. Let me move this seat. I did buy the kids headphones. One of them uses their, one of them uses them, the other don't. So I have to listen to one iPad rather than two, but there you go, can't win them all. Um, amp install. Check out how tidy that is down there. Kerwin Vega again, and I run the amp wires from the backup battery, which is in the back. It's under here somewhere, if I can get to it. Secondary battery is under there. I run my amp wire straight to it, and then obviously the phono leads. I do need to bury them and tuck them away a bit more. You can see them there, but uh, I've not long had all the interior back out, and I need to have some more out to finish it and finesse it. Need to screw that to the wall. Didn't want to drill any holes in the wall, but uh, I think I'm going to have to. Other than that, the reverse camera is the boot shut. Reverse camera, let's check him out. Ignition on, in reverse. The quality, and because I've got a bit of wire, it is a bit squiffy, but I'm sure once I've fitted the connector together, it won't be doing that. Bit of a uh, bit of 12 volt cable isn't working for auxiliary leads, but it does the job. I can see my bumper right there so i can park literally straight up and the stereo it does dull down so if we've got the radio on stick it in reverse radio gets quieter and we can see where we're going and you might tell can you see the screen's a bit scuffy there you can you can see my swipe marks no not tinder they're swipe marks but i have got the protective layer still on it is a glass screen a lot of android stereos have got plastic screens and you end up with the uh the swipe left, swipe right marks, but that's glass screen, it never scratches. I'll put a link to everything I've used in the video description. So not the biggest update, but it's something I wanted to show you because I am absolutely pumped with how that stereo's worked out. Sits nice in there, it looks nice. I could recess it in a bit more. It probably, it doesn't bother me. Um, it looks good, it works good, perfect value for money, um, can't fault it. Need to stick my bodge, I mean my cable tie in, that's a good fix. But other than that, we're done. Um, again, with the, uh, where is my phone? With the wireless charging in that, I'm really happy with that. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. You normally get somewhere, or I would, because I've got the kids personal hotspot in. Then with the stereo using all the battery, I'd get somewhere, have no battery. Now I'll get there, bosh. Um, yeah, brilliant. Anyway, we are, it's seven o'clock in the evening. No, it's three minutes past seven. I'm just going down to my buddy's workshop that I work at, the body shop, and we're doing Andy's front end. We've already done the conversion. Hopefully you've seen that video, but we're doing some painting bits. We need to prepare and prime his bonnet, his bumper. So we're going there to do that. That'd be the next video. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one, guys. I'm out. Cool, that was a bit long-winded, wasn't it? Happy days! Let's go to work, yay!